Double vernier. A lot of people use this on their everyday lathe work. But there's a little bit more to this than, than meets the eye. A standard vernier can measure four different things. It can measure inside diameter, outside diameter, depth, and also a step. But that's not all there is to the story. I use a vernier on my lathe and on my milling machine. And the vernier scale that I've incorporated in my dial gauges can make a machine five, ten times more accurate. I've employed this technique on a number of my machines and a number of my builds. Before I show you how to actually use a vernier and how to check that a vernier is still sort of good, let me show you how to use a vernier scale to make your machines way more accurate. But before I get there, let's just talk about the vernier scale itself and how it works. So I've done this nice little animation and let's follow it using that. The vernier is actually a very simple instrument. It is really just two components that slide relative to each other. And then you can measure a whole lot of different things. And we'll get to that a little bit later. The beauty in this little device is the actual vernier scale. Now this was developed by a French guy by the name of Pierre Vernier. Viva la France! And what he realized is if you only had one point on one side of the scale, you were very limited. If you needed to divide this scale, it became incredibly small. But nothing stops you from putting another scale on the other side. And then it really is just a matter of lining up the lines and interpolating in between the various points. So all that you've done really is you've divided the one scale orders of magnitude on the other side of the line. So in this example, it is 20 because the zero or your first point is just over the line. And then you just check which secondary line matches up and you add that to the initial value. So in this case, it'll be 20.05. And that really is how simple it is to use a vernier. All right, let's talk about actually using a vernier. My personal preference is a 150 millimeter digital vernier. I prefer the digital vernier just because it's much easier to read and also the smaller vernier is easier to use around the headstock without it clashing with anything in the area. I do have a larger vernier which is not a battery operated vernier that sits on the shelf for months and I prefer the non-battery operated one just so that the battery doesn't go off. There's nothing worse than grabbing a vernier and you can't use it because the battery is dead. Right, using a vernier is very simple. You do need to make sure that the legs are clean and there's no debris in between them, otherwise you're going to get a false reading. You also need to check that there's no light coming from between the top and the bottom legs. If there's any light coming from, there's a problem with your vernier and you're not going to get a good reading. Now most people are pretty good with measuring your outside diameter and inside diameter which is relatively easy there's nothing difficult about that and a depth measurement is also relatively simple a hole like this for example has got the standard wedge at the bottom because it was drilled and if i wanted to measure the absolute depth i have a problem because the drilled hole is bigger than the, the width of my vernier the easiest way to get around that is to just take any normal bar stock or any square bar, measure it to the end. If we take that, we zero it, we subtract what you measured, that hole over there to the center where the chisel for the drill was is exactly 7.6 millimeters. One of the nice ways to use your zero if you don't want to do calculations. All right, let's just get it back to zero. This is the thing that most people don't know about verniers. There's actually a fourth measurement tool on a vernier. If your two moving parts of your vernier match up at the end, you are able to measure a step. Measuring a step like this is far more accurate than using the depth gauge which can be typically up to 0.1 millimeter out, depending on how the vernier is placed. 
where the step measurement is far more accurate and, as you can see, far more repeatable. And that's all the ways you can use a vernier on a lathe. But what you can do is you can use a vernier or modify a vernier and use it as a DRO. Verniers don't last forever. When you drop them, they get damaged. And one of the best things to do with a digital vernier is convert it into a DRO, a digital readout. Now, this is one that dropped and got damaged. It doesn't take much to make a system to connect it to the bed of the lathe and just bolt it to the carriage itself. This now becomes a very accurate DRO. And also the readout is nice and big, so you don't need to worry about small little numbers. So let's take that step that we had a look at earlier. If we zero it, so it's now on zero, we measured it to four millimeters. And with my DRO, just touching the tool on the workpiece, I'm at four millimeters exactly. So this DRO is very convenient and very accurate. This changes the, the lathe accuracy in this direction to 10 micron. As nice as the digital vernier is on the lathe, I actually don't leave it on the lathe itself. The problem is it makes the lathe a little bit more difficult to clean. And also the odd chip gets stuck in between the reader and the pickup and then it doesn't work so well. So I only put the digital vernier on the lathe when I need to do very, very accurate cuts. And let's be honest, how often do you need to do a 10 micron accurate cut in the main traverse direction of the lathe? Normally you need to do it in this direction. There's another way to do more accurate sort of cuts in the main traverse. And all you need to do is add a vernier scale to your standard hand dial. Now, my lathe came out standard with a half a mil increment on the hand dial itself. And I converted that to a 0.1 millimeter increment by using the exact same philosophy as vernier did in the early days. So if you divide the other side of your stationary parts, in other words, not the dial gauge, the opposite side into five, five individual increments, then you're basically dividing your main increment by five. So if you have a half a mil traverse, now you have a 0.1 millimeter traverse. If you have five increments, all you need to do is to make sure that you have four on your, on your, on the dial that rotates and then you have your vernier scale. It's actually very, very simple to use. If you traverse, you zero it, and then each individual step is 0.1. So that'll be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then you gain on half a mole. That's why they need to line up that one and that one. I have done this to each one of the dial gauges on both my lathe and on my milling machine. The nice thing is on the lathe, the main traverse was half a mil, but the cross slide up here was 50 micron. So if you divide the 50 micron by five, now the, now the cross slide is 10 micron accurate. So this lathe is five times more accurate than what it was when I bought it. And I've done the exact same thing to my milling machine. Essentially, all of my lathes are, all my, all my machines, my lathes and my milling machines are five times more accurate than what they were when I bought them. All because of our good friend, Vernier.